So here we are on No Shame, episode three, um, on the social media app Lemur, the conspiracy. And as I say, conspiracy, it links in today because we actually have a real life conspiracy today. Um, we have Sandra Fay here and we have Mick Banks. Um, Sandra Fay, not only was she was a teacher in my old school, so I know her a long time, um, but she was involved with the, the Jobs Tell Not Guilty campaign, which is... I'll let, I'll let Sandra introduce herself and I'll let her tell the story because she can tell a much better hand. I'm interested in listening to this one as well. So if, you, if, you're, on you, if you're on YouTube viewing um, or if you're on the, the Limar app, download the Limar app and you can, you can listen to the social audio and, and you can make your own, of course. So, but Sandra, and anyway, so tell us the story of what happened here from, from the start, from when, um, when the protest began and what the protest was for. So what was the protest for? Well, I'd say, you know, in Ireland, everyone knows back in 2008, there was, you know, we had a big crash, it was bailouts, and working class people were at the front of the bailouts, and we could see the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, and our estates were getting decimated. And in 2011, a huge vote in Jobstown, Labour Party got landslide. You know, everybody went out and voted for a Labour movement, working class movement, we were like, yeah, we put them in. And there was talk of them going into coalition with the same old government, and we were like, no, don't do that. Like, you know, people who were anyway including politics, like, don't do that, you're only going to sell us out. And they went in. And they ran a campaign which was a leading part of our um, of the court case was every little hurts. You know, this is what Fina Gale and Fina Fall do to you and they had a list of many items was in Nick. I remember, I think there was more. Amo cuts and uh, every little hurts and uh, lo and behold they went into power and they did they cut and more. But what they really viciously attacked was lone parents, you know, they really attacked them, got rid of that payment. Basically we're saying to people when your kids are six or seven, you have to get out to work and or else it's just getting stopped and that's the end of it. And, and just, it, sorry, just go, so just so people know, so yeah, was this uh, the, the, the time you ran for the election as well at the same time? No, this was beforehand, so like, oh, this, so okay. this was 2011, this so we had hope in the Labour Party. Okay, so, so they, just so people know yeah, that uh, so Sandra has ran as well. Yeah and, I, uh, yeah, and I ran later then. So people had sold hopes, but they came in and they cut everything, you know, and then it was leaving people with no hope. Because in a lot of areas, in, in, in a lot of people don't have skilled jobs and childcare is so expensive. Mm -hmm. And they made a promise that if they did cut long parents, they would give a Swedish model that there'd be childcare, you know. And they didn't do that, but they were just forcing women out. Again, shame on young women who can't afford childcare, who are doing an amazing job working in the home yeah, yeah, and expensive. are actually quite trapped there to say it was a choice, that they would love to have job opportunities and college opportunities. So on that day in Jobstown in 2014, and it's very apt that there was an on cost on cost on graduation and the majority of them were females <laughs> live <Hey man>. <laughs> <laughs> technical difficulty technical it's difficulty that's live recording folks it's a, yeah, that's it's a class two studio yeah. at the moment well we're walking up to a tree stand so <laughs> yeah we'll be there it's a conspiracy it's going the conspiracy <laughs> yeah, the, it's the ghost of the war that's what that was, <laughs> that's what that was. so there was a lot of women who graduated that day those men but it was predominantly women and they were so aware of the students on that day that um that we were able to get childcare and we had low parents and we had some funding but they're cutting it so the people coming behind us would not be entitled to this second chance education. Oh, so they were, they were allowed to have it till that point and then anybody after that didn't get it. It wasn't and so the students themselves called the protests and which is the media are trying to miss that and blacken that out that the students themselves had put in complaints to Catch and Sapone to say not for this Labour so the Labour betrayal was important because they were inviting in the tarnished of the government uh, you know so it's the second in command yeah, second into in the command. estate totally betrayed the whole of the estate they, mm -hmm. they had won a landslide victory because people sold hope so it was a bit it was a betrayal we were coming out against you yep. betrayed us so we people had voted for, for that yeah. party and they felt uh, misunderstood and like and, and upset because yeah. that person was coming to kind of celebrate a victory that we they, weren't feeling they, no, didn't they, deliver, they didn't deliver they didn't deliver and in the height of trying to privatize our work so they were coming at us for, they came at us for property tax, they came at us for loads, but the water was the key issue and it was the straw that broke the camel's back as well. Yeah. So it was their betrayal, linked, a month beforehand there was 120,000 people on the street marching to stop the privatisation of our water. Because we were never disillusioned that, this was never about environment. Ah, lovely water. Lovely water. <laughs> they tried to tell us, save water. the water and pay for it. But you're going to put it into a, you know, the hands of yeah. billionaire glass. Of course. You know, and... We're not stupid. We've seen the betrayal too many times with our oil, so, um, our fishing, our fishing our everything, gas. you know. And we had great support from people who tried to save our gas and oil from Rossport during the campaign. So, but it was so important to see that people, there was 120 tails on the street the month before. She was coming into Jobstown. 
she had to know all across the country there was protests being organized on the same day on a saturday again i think you know god knows how many came across there was huge protests all across the country in people's own communities and this was all parties this involved was, as well this was all sorts of people all all but huge gra huge grassroots huge community yeah. groups people were setting up their own um Facebook pages, you know, Jobstown against water charges, Brookfield water charges. There was people setting up water fairies, you know, new their own news campaigns, you know, coming in to take out the the water meters because people were sitting sick of the water. I think you so, had a part to play in this. Um, you Do you want to tell that real well, quick? Listen to this story, Shane. Um, just, just before no. just before the time of the protest, actually, um, they were putting meters in a lot of houses. Obviously not in Tala because they would never got in Tala. But people didn't want them. People didn't want these mirrors, you know. People aren't stupid. They knew what it meant. It meant privatisation. So myself and others, and obviously a lot of others around the country as well, we set up a lot of water meter fairy pages where people could contact us at the page and we'd help them or teach them how to remove a water meter. So that was going great for a while. And our page got huge, Tala Water Fairies page. That, that page got huge. And everyone was at us going, you know, let us know what's happening on a daily basis. So we decided, in a room like this, something like this, we're a backdrop in somebody's kitchen, we decided to set up a little stage and do <laughs> Water Fairies News. <laughs> so every day, every day, I think it was at six, wasn't it? It was at six oh, yeah, for Cash for News. We'd go into this girl's house and we'd set up our kitchen like a studio and we'd do the Water Fairies News. And it was getting thousands <laughs> upon thousands of likes. <laughs> and they shut the page down. <laughs> Facebook did? Facebook shut the page down, yeah. It only takes one or two to report it. Oh, and they shut it down. No. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, yeah, just yeah, saying. But, but it happened anyway, you know. Um, but with the costumes, with the wigs, with the face masks and all that, it was really funny actually. Yeah. That's brilliant. So yeah. kind of like anonymous, but like yeah. jobs tell water. Like, it's not <laughs> it's 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 anonymous it's anymore, really. thanks to Paddy. It's just a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, But up to then, it was the, quite anonymous. Elima yeah. exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Sandra, so, so she came into the estate and... Um, then, then what kind of, what happened from there? Like, so she would say, and, and, and like, I leave you to all the funny bits, I'm real serious <laughs> now taking the politics, yeah. sorry for boring you. She would say it was just, um, between them two, it's very important because there was two political figures that, you know, exist, Joan Burton, the Tarnisha, and um, Catherine Sapone, um, who was just, uh, you know, she um, was a senator and she was going to run in the next election, but this was not disclosed to anybody. But they tried to lie that they did it for their own political gain. And in the trials, it's very important. It came out that they were totally doing it for their own political gain. That they were told by the students she was not to come in. They signed the petition, they were ignored. They tried to say that that's never happened. But through one person, Joan's testimony contradicting um, Catherine right. Sapone's, and then they had to read out Joan's. And how would they politically gain from that just there? Just so, the, well, at the time, sorry. sorry just to clarify the yeah. how the time, would they At the time, Catherine Sapone was an independent. Right. Okay, and because of all the work that she'd done on ladies' rights and education and, all, and so on, Labour were actually advertising her on their poster, their election poster. She claims that she, she contacted them and wanted to renew because she was running as an independent. But it came out in the trial that John Borton, actually it was a show that you were on, it was Vincent, Vincent Brown. Brown. Vincent Brown and St. Anne's, where she categorically denied the poem that she'd invited John Borton to tell it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. adamantly, I think the exact words were, I did not fight that woman to tell it. Mm -hmm. John Borton's testimony during the trial said that she had received an invitation from Catherine Sapone. So when she was cross-examined on it, she said, well, maybe it wasn't a direct invitation, maybe it was a letter from the ministerial office. It turned out then that she admitted later on again in her evidence that she had a hidden agenda coming to tell it that day, which was to recruit Sapone to run as a Labour candidate Labour in the election. Oh, right. And they wanted to so ride. So their lives were being tripped up every way. Sorry. They wanted to ride on the back of the students returning to education. She wanted to associate herself with these. Like we have to be aware when these TDs come in to ribbon events and they want to attach themselves to hard work that people themselves are doing in the community. 100%. I wanted to take out that, and I I said it to her. And but there was lots of stuff done that. Um, Catching the poem on that show pre election, right? How many times had Joan been in Jobstown? Never. Before that? Never. That was her first time in Jobstown. Oh. She'd been there once 20 years ago or something, she said. Yeah, probably. Oh, when she was selling, that was when she was selling fortune cookies. No, she was just. No, she In the trial. Come, no, she'd come out of part. She had a point in the job, she got lost one night. She remember telling us, she told us a story in court about where she used to get off the bus and go up this hill with the Girl Scouts. It was the wrong bus. It, it didn't even stop there, the bus. It stopped up at the old Bridge of Books, which is the old mill now. Right. So it was. Absolutely the other end of Tala, but she thought it was Jobstown. 
So she yeah. had no idea where the hell she was even. But the idea that... It's like bone and bleeding nearly. Exactly, right? yeah. Men, like, men yeah. But the idea, she has seven people up on trial for kidnapping yeah, okay, her. So She's crying in the trial, you know, <clears throat> can I stop? I need water. Uh-huh. You know, this is too traumatised for me. I can't deal with this. So the second in command in the country yeah. had... How many people up on trial? She, 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 19 she, in total. Yeah. And the charge is... False imprisonment. False imprisonment. Right. Right. So the false imprisonment her happened testimony. at this protest this day. Yeah. yeah. The false imprisonment is claimed to have happened because... You were both there, weren't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, we were, yeah. yeah. Um, the false imprisonment is claimed to have happened because we were sitting at the back of the car. Right. Okay, now because... So she was in the car. She was sitting in the car. The guards made the decision to move her into the car. Not us. She was in the church. She originally walked from Ancasson down to the church. Oh, right, yeah. That's only, that's only a, by, 100 metres, 200 metres. Yeah, okay. it took about... 10, 15 minutes. Was there a water bomb thrown there? There was a bomb. There was a bomb. There was, a, yeah. bomb. A, there was bomb. a huge bomb came from some child of about eight years of age, you know? We thought this was funny. It was a water balloon. A water balloon. The, the irony. irony. The irony, you know, <laughs> the irony of it. But, you know, we talked to she the did, child She did get hit with an egg too. The water was paid for it, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah she'd be glad <laughs> to know. Yeah, she, yeah. she got hit with a water balloon, or bomb as she called it, and an egg. Okay, now, the people that were on trial, at the time, only two of us were there was myself and Frank Donahue were the only ones there. Oh, yeah. And we were clearly seen on the video footage filming. And Frank was at the front. So there's no way we threw these things. You know, and that was 100% obvious. And they said it in court that we weren't even accused of stealing or throwing these things. Sorry. Really? But we were still up on charges. We were named and shamed simply because the first three on the indictment were solidarity members. AAA at the time they were called. There was Paul Murphy, there was Mick Murphy, and there was Kira Mann. Gone further down the list then you had an Ordigy member, Scott Masterson. So them four were purely political. Frank Donaghy to an extent is a solidarity member, but he wouldn't be a councillor. But because Frank sat behind the car and because he was visible there at the start with me and because of the connection with solidarity, he was charged. Now Frank is 71 years old. Oh no, I'm trying to actually see that. 71. Yes, 71. I said that to my girlfriend yeah. and I did, I said, one of them lads was 71. 71, 71. years of age. No, this is what Frank was charged with. On the bonnet of the car, he did this. No way, he won't do it. I've seen that. That's, that's on a video. And all of them videos, the video of this project, that's a good thing, is actually on YouTube yeah. as well. So yeah. you and can see some of this yeah. kind of footage. And that was the only way they could identify Frank during the whole trial, was the walk down to Ancaston, which they said, by the way, didn't have anything to do with the false imprisonment because she was out in the open. Right. And then the tapping on the car. That was the only reason Frank yeah. was there. Then there was myself because I ran a lot of the says no theory. pages. And, and, and says no pages. <laughs> yeah, I ran Brookview says no and... I set up the job town says no page and I ran a couple of community group pages. Mm. And then we had Ken Porcel, who should never have been there in the first place because he was wrongly identified, which came out during the trial, which is why his was acquitted. His case was acquitted first. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So it went from there and But he had to go through the, the trial. Oh yeah, yeah, and the raids and everything yeah. else. And John Raids. That um, as well, yeah. yeah. So 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 after the so uh, what happened in the end of it was that uh, she was she was in the car. Uh, the, the protest was that they were sitting down and they weren't letting them leave. But there, there was exits as well, wasn't there? Yeah, was there, there, were, there was loads of exits. And what's very important came across in the trials, right? And and then the see the raises. The sit down happened by I think two spots of five minutes, right? So it definitely but, happened since the sixties, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, like you know, it's happened and since before. And, before. and before. But what came yeah. out in the courts? This is for everybody to notice, like, because this is very important. And the bars has played a, a, a blinder that we have a right when we're on a protest to her right to protest. So they kept coming in and they kept saying about her right, she had a right, you know, to leave on that day, and which she did. And they kept saying, well, her right to don't supersede ours, and it doesn't. There's no, you, you, no one right more entitled than the other, and they will come into conflict. Right. And so what the point was is, the guards never came in that day and protected her right to protest. And this is what regularly happens in protests, and how the guards are used, and the guards are used against working class people all of the time. Yeah, they walk like in and go, sides, yeah, exactly. they, they walk in and go, you're a nuisance, this is, what, this is exactly what the, the, the barrister said today. You treat them like a nuisance, said, you're a nuisance, here's the important person, get out of her way, move on and they in that process they pulled off Paul Murphy's top tried to strangle him you know Scott Madison the same top people were pulling let him go let him go and it got, they got really aggressive in there and everyone kept saying sit down and keep it calm mm-hmm. and then we kept going so the second time that it got aggressive as well they came in they, they just thought we were walking along marching nicely singing our tunes Frank's 200 metres ahead the 71 year old man that they were trying to bring that into false imprisonment you could be 200 metres ahead of someone but you could be Paul holding the banner with a load of you know as they, name, as they call them, old dears in the courts and the women will kill me you know and that's false imprisonment 
So then the next time I got aggressive was, and this is, comes from the helicopter above. So this is what's part of Fulton Prison. The helicopter above says, uh, and no real hassle here, lads. Now the poor jury had to watch, you know, three days of video. And very boring because it was just a big sing song for ages. You know, when you put small little bits of where yeah. it got a bit heated. And this is the next point where I would say it got a bit heated. And this is what the helicopter, the guard says in the helicopter. Uh, Bit heated air lads when air lads went in. The air lads seemed to, you know, cause a, um, you know, cause a bit of friction. Cause a bit of friction because they came in in the right gear and just came in on top well, of us. And this video was played in court. And this was played. Like and then we sat down and we said. Please ask the Royal Squad to leave. We're we're slow march and we're in the process. We're not doing nothing wrong. We're allowed to slow march. In which case, this is where the, there was a vote. But if they if they withdraw the public union, would we get back up and start walking? Which we were always walking. They were the ones who kept stopping us when they yeah. came in and impeded our space and were trying to intimidate us. Which they never set up and protected our right to protest. This yeah, woman betrayed yeah. us, and we just wanted to slow march out. So as a response to that, they went off and very early within the next week. And to Kenny, the tea shock of the cousin, uh, country, the Prime Minister came out and said to Paul Murphy that he kidnapped John Bourne. He was the first to accuse her, right? Now, in any other country, you've heard what happened. That was the most volatile. That's a protest. That's a sit down protest. If you're not dealing with a conspiracy, that's a sit down protest. So nobody grabbed somebody and stuck them in the bill of a car. No. And, and took them off to an abandoned building. And, and to me, that's that's kidnapping you. Yeah? There was three you know, exits that that's the jury right. put forward. They could have got out all the ransom. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that, that's kidnapping. It's tiger kidnapping. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Yeah. That's the one. I don't want to give you back my son. Yeah. So he said that's that's kidnapping. To me. Yeah. There was three uh, exits. Where Ken's beard could have been Mel Gibson. Yeah. So, so how long? So how long did she stay before she left? Just just the hours two of that. Two and a half. And then we'll see what happened after that. Slow pros. They, they don't have the car stop two, two times. Pros. Slow. Uh, so that's what he's saying. You were delayed. You were inconvenienced. Right. You could have got out of the car, you could have walked, you could have moved. reversed was the other option the helicopter said. There's no problem here, lads. They, they can reverse, but they seem to not want to do that. I don't know why I didn't okay, And see that. that footage as well. Where yeah. Can people get... Because, like, yeah. as I said, this is like... If you, you know, know conspiracy, like, uh, and I've yeah. I wanted to kind of... And that's what I wanted to talk to you about this myself, because I wanted to ask you questions on a, on a level that's like... And then what? Do you get what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So they can, can people get the footage of this of the helicopter? Oh, we've shared it. There's, it's up to nearly, It's just short of a million shares. So it's still on YouTube. There's a page, there's, on Facebook, there's a page on Facebook like called Jobs Are Not Guilty, and if they go onto that page, they can see the actual footage. It's not edited or anything else. It's exactly what was shown in court. And you'll hear, so what you'll hear the, the conversation. Just so because people will want to click into that. Everything we're talking about. After, after the public order union moved to the side of the road, you'll, you'll see them standing on the side yeah. of the road, and the helicopter is talking to the driver of the jeep, which John Morton and Karen O'Connor are in. And he turns around and goes, there's a little bit of argy bargy there, lads, when our lads moved in. That seems to dissipate now, he says. All the people at the front of the Jeep, if you were to reverse now, you'd have a way out. And you can also hear the driver, Karen O'Connell, and John Borton all laughing and just dismissing it. Yeah, and this is someone who's got an area of view saying, it's no bother, lads, just reverse. But what the... What the bar- so, so we have a big group of Garda, a big group of protesters, 180, there's 180 Garda, uh, a group of protesters and the the second queen of in the command of of the country in a way. Yeah. So like, so and, and now the charge is that so last week only last week you were acquitted when you oh, was it was it kidnapping or was false it imprisonment. false imprisonment of somebody? Yeah. So how like how did it happen then? Like so when did you find out? Did you find out when the guards were kicking your door in and the, the, the protest? Your house? The protest was in November of two thousand fourteen, and we were. We were arrested in February with Dawn Reds. Six guards came to my house. I can't remember the, the exact number of detectives or guards. I think it was four detectives and two uniformed guards. But my young lad opened the door. He was, uh, at the time, he would have been eight. He would have been eight, yeah. So he opened the door and he goes, Dad, there's a load of guards at the door. And I said, yeah, what do you want? I said, yeah, you must be here for the job or something, eh? Because we'd been tipped off the day before. Paul Williams leaked it. That we were going to be charged in our crime arrest. correspondent crime these so, are ganglands normally so we knew we knew they were coming because we were the ones that sat behind the car so if Paul Murphy was going to be charged we had to be charged because we were arm linked with him behind the car so and, and they came so Paul Murphy was at the oh sorry 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 Paul Murphy had been contacted no, no Paul Murphy had been contacted by Paul okay, to say yeah, oh, right. Paul these charges right. are on the way is right. going to be arrested so they came to the house six of them and showed this tiny little badge to my son my son said that's not real <laughs> and he pulled his jacket back cheeky pig pulled his jacket back and he said to him, that's real and he goes dad they have guns <laughs> so I came down and I go what do you want 
uh, where to arrest you for the false imprisonment of John Borden okay. outside Ireland that probably wouldn't be like a um, thing but gar- Irish guards don't carry guns don't, yeah. don't. don't so, show them to kids it was funny in a way because he went to walk into the house and I said so where are you going and he says I'm coming in to arrest you and I went have you a search warrant and he goes no no just an arrest warrant and I says well wait at the door then I'll be out in a minute so, so, um, so, so for uh, for so for the YouTube video, um, sorry, but we have to cut it right now. So if you want to go over to the App Store and download uh, the Lima app, uh, we're going to continue on this. But for now, now we can you can all breathe out. <laughs> 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 Thanks for viewing this time and uh, tune in for episode four.